I'm going to show you four different watercolor techniques. The first thing you want to do is just tape four small pieces of paper all the way down to a board. I'm using an insulation board. You can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I buy it for my students and just have it cut to different sizes so that we have different size boards. The first thing that you were, the first technique I'm going to show you is wet on wet. And so if you just take your pencil and draw a sphere in this first section and then mark where you want to leave it white, that's going to be my first one, which is going to be wet on wet. I'm going to lay down water. And I don't want to use too much, but I also don't want to use too little. I'll lay water in here, and I'm not adding any water in there because I want my paint to flow only in this section. Now, I always tell my students you have to use at least five colors. So I'm going to start with a darker color at the bottom. I'm going to make this like a red radish or a red bouncy ball, and you drop in your paint. So I'm starting with a darker color down at the bottom because that would be a darker area. So I use purple because that's a pretty dark color. And bring in a little bit of blue. Green would be a good color to mix in with the red as well because red and green mixed together are, the red and green are complementary colors, so green mixing in with red is going to make the red look darker. So I added a little bit of green there. I'm going to bring in my red. Start to drop that in. Notice I'm just dropping this in. I'm going to bring in some of the orangish red. I'll bring a little bit more of the regular red. And I'm going to bring in a little bit of yellow. So I used at least five colors. Now to blend these, you just pick up your board and you blend it as much or as little as you want. When you're happy with it, you stop and you let it dry. And that's the wet on wet technique. Next thing I'm going to show you is wet on dry. So with this you need to use wet paint but a dry surface. So with this technique I might be using it for like a small area and then I'm going to go right up next to the other color and not brush it together, but make sure that they touch when I want them to blend in together. And so very wet paint. So if I'm trying to blend an area together, and I can obviously I can get it to blend more by picking it up and moving it as well, just like I did with the wet on wet. So this could be done. For example, with a, like a bigger area, but you have to work very quickly when using this method. I tend to use it for smaller, little tiny things where it's not going to work as well to come in and cover an entire area with paint. But you have to get it to blend right up next to the color. And again, you're not brushing the colors together when you come and you lay them down. You're just coming and you're touching next to it. And then as you want it to blend, you just pick up your board and you move it. And it'll blend as much or as little as you want. So that is wet on dry. This next technique is called dry on dry, and so you have to use a dry piece of paper, and your brush needs to be dry, but you have to have wet paint. So in order to do that, you're going to get your paint wet. So I'm just coming in and getting the color that I want to use wet. And then I'm going to take my brush, 
and I'm going to dry it off. Okay, so I'm using paper towel to do that. And then I'm just going to dip my brush in that wet paint, and then you just kind of rub it across your paper. And when you're doing this, you're creating a texture. So this can be a really good thing to add to uh, like bark or if sometimes you just needed a little bit more of a color so once you have a layer that is completely dry you could come back in with a little bit of um, texturing on it and so that's what this technique is used for and you can change and use other colors with it as well so like I'm going to just add in a little bit of orange into that so typically it's something that I'll use um, sometimes to let light come through a little bit or sometimes uh, just as a, like a final layer. The last technique is a wash technique and for this you want to take your wash brush so that's this brush and you want to take your paint and you want to like I'll use like the top of like the lid and I'll mix up some different colors that I want to like mix together until I'm happy with the with with this and I might mix in maybe even like a few different colors now if I wanted to cover, cover a large area I would be mixing up quite a bit of color but since I'm just doing this small little piece I don't really need a lot so with this I'm going to take this wash brush and I'm just going to use water and I'm going to go straight across the paper. I'm just going to lay water across the paper and this is how you go around objects, you color the whole background, skies, things like that. So now I'm going to lay in my wash like this and again I can get this mixed more if I would like it to by moving the paper I can also lay in clouds by lifting it out So this is what all four techniques look like after they're finished. So again, this was wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on dry, and the wash, where I pulled some color out.